how's it going guys? Jeremy Donson here with TheDrumProfessor.com and today we're going to be going over how to hold the drumstick and why. Very important to say why to hold it a certain way. So there's times where your fingers are going to be all the way around the drumstick. There's times that you're going to use, and that's called stroke. And then there's times you're going to use a fingering technique where your fingers squeeze the drumstick as well. And then there's times that you're going to bounce. So how to incorporate those three in different times in a song is very, very important. That's what we're going to cover today. So, okay, so let's get started. So first step in how to hold the drumstick, you want to grab it just like you would a baseball bat, okay? Then you put your thumb on the side of the drumstick. Now this gives you a little bit more control if it's on the side instead of here, because if you're grabbing the stick like you would a baseball bat with the thumb on the side still, then you're going to have a little bit of a gap there and you could drop your stick. So first step is to grab it like this, then move your thumb on the side. Now, when you're holding the stick, you don't, want it to, you don't want your thumb to be out like this. You want it to be tucked in to where there is no gap between your thumb and your hand here. You should be able to hold a quarter in between your thumb and your hand here. Okay, This helps to not drop your stick. Now, second step, so we have this step down. Second step is you want to have your fingers wrapped around the stick and if possible you want your tip, fingertips to be touching the palm of your hand. Your middle ring and pinky finger should be touching the palm of your hand for now. There are times where you will not have them touching but in general in the beginning you definitely want them to touch. Uh, one reason is because if they're not then the stick may fall out behind here and you drop your stick. You also lose control. The more fingers you have the more control that you have. Okay so the next step is you want to have your hand flat to where you, if you had a quarter on top it would stay on your hand. If you play like this then obviously a quarter would fall off of your hand. So you want to have it flat to where a quarter would stay there. Now this is very very important when you do that <clears throat> because you use muscles that you wouldn't otherwise use in your arm. We're going to go over that in just a second to show you how big of a deal that really is. Uh, next step, you want your stick to be in line with your arm. You don't want it to be what's called broken, like this, where your arm's going this way and your stick's going out. You want your stick to be in line like an extension of your arm, just like this. Okay, and last but not least, we don't want to be animal on the drums. If you move just your wrist, then you'll have a lot more control and you also won't have, uh, you'll have a much smaller muscle group to move, so therefore you can go faster. Okay, so I want to show you something. So I want you to try this. What I want you to do is I want you to grab one or two sticks, doesn't matter, either one, in your right or left hand, you can pick. And what I want you to do is I want you to grab your forearm just below your elbow. These four fingers on top and your thumb just on bottom. Now, a lot of drummers, as you may see, they play a lot of times like this. They'll play with their thumbs in the air, especially if they're doing like a jazz. They may have their thumb facing the ceiling, like this. Now, is it horrible to do that? Not necessarily, but when you do that, you cut out muscle, uh, muscles that you would use if you had it flat. So I'm going to show you why that's so important. Again, it's not just because I like it. It's the best way to hold your stick, and here's why. Okay, so you grab your arm like this, and what you're going to do is you're going to make sure um, that your hand's flat, thumb's on the side, and stick is in line with your arm, and you're fully gripping the stick all the way around with your fingertips. You want to squeeze, not death grip tight, but a little bit firm here. Um, and if it's harder to do that and it feels weird, just use one stick. Okay, so we have the stick in our hand, ready position here. Now I want you to go up just a little bit, and you, pr you won't feel very much muscle movement there. You might feel just a little bit, but not much. Again, very important to keep these three fingers touching the palm of your hand. Okay, so now I want you to go up all the way and you'll feel that muscle lock. When you do that, you'll feel this muscle lock in place there. But it only happens when you go up all the way and it locks that muscle. Okay, so you can definitely feel that huge difference in between that. Now put your thumb in the air and go up all the way. You don't feel near as much motion in your muscles. So even if you practice five hours a day or however long, if you practice this way, 
it's not going to be as uh, effective for you or beneficial to you as it would practicing 30 minutes this way because you're using all of your muscle groups that you're supposed to use in your arm. Very important. It's like working out and you can either push up this much with 5 pounds or you can push up all the way with 50 pounds. You're going to get a lot more out of it pushing all the way up using all those muscle groups there. Okay. Now if you do it and take your fingers off, you feel almost nothing. If you take your back three fingers, you don't feel very much at all. You'll feel a little bit of movement, but not near as much as if your fingers are still on the stick. So super important. Um, now how to apply that is whenever you're playing a snare exercise, and if you want sample snare exercises, then I'd recommend going to my website, drumprofessor thedrumprofessor.com, and sign up for a free session, and we'll go over some exercises that would be really great for you to build, to build up some speed and control. But uh, whenever you're doing an exercise, if you follow these steps and you play with your hand, with your wrist going full extension without moving your arm, it's going to be a huge help for you. You're going to learn things a lot faster. Okay? And you'll get a lot, a lot more sore a lot faster as well. Okay, so just to recap, gap closed here. You should be able to put a quarter in between and hold it there. Hand flat to where you can keep a quarter on top. Stick in line with your arm and fingers wrapped around the stick. In doing that, you're going to develop a lot more speed and control. All right, so there are many other things that we can talk about here. Um, there's different types of strokes. There's a single stroke. There's double stroke, triple stroke, all kinds of stuff. But the main things is different grips in different situations in a song. So, for example, you only want to do a bounce if it's too fast and you can't keep up with that speed otherwise. And if you do a bounce, that's when you would take your fingers off, these three fingers off the back of the stick, and you hit one time and let it bounce. And then double stroke, you would want to keep your fingers on, control there. So get as fast as you can double stroke. Then you would switch to what's called a fingering technique where you're going to squeeze with your fingers. So you don't want to go really huge like this. That's just a big, big waste of motion. Think of kicking your bass pedal. Here's the pedal. Here's your foot. And as you go up, you take your foot completely off the pedal. All that motion is a waste of motion. So same thing if you take your fingers way off the stick. It doesn't do any good. It actually hurts you and hurts your speed big time. It's big time. Okay, so fingering, what you do is you, you still use your wrist, but your fingers stay on the stick. Very important. You don't have to take them off the stick, but they do come off the palm of your hand. So you're basically, if you notice, my wrist is still going up and down, but my fingers finish it off. Okay? It's much easier to use a smaller muscle than it is a bigger muscle. Same thing with instead of doing this, if you do this, you're using your whole arm and a whole other muscle group here. So if you use your fingers, you can get quite fast in doing that. Okay, and then for the fastest speed, there's the bounce, bounce roll. And that's where you just simply take your fingers off of the stick this time. You hit once and let it bounce the second time. You don't have to take them off much, just a little bit just barely off of the stick there. If you see, there's the stick, there's my hand. I'm not taking it off very much, just enough to let the, to let, to let the uh, stick bounce the second time. So think of it like this. I'm probably the world's worst basketball player, seriously. I am good at double dribbling, dropping elbows, and drawing fouls. That's it. It's very sad. But uh, it's a great example using a basketball, because let's say this was the floor, and you're dribbling a basketball. If you're dribbling and you're only this high up, the basketball is going to go brrr and it's going to die out. It's not going to have really enough room to bounce there. If you have your hand higher up and you dribble a basketball, then it's going to have more room to bounce and it's going to bounce easier, more freely, and it can also bounce um, without any type of interruption from your hand forcing it back down too fast and killing the stroke. In other words, a muddy or dirty stroke. So if you ever hear your roll and it sounds like this, that's because you got your hand too close to the basketball, or in other words, 
you're not giving the stick room to breathe or room to bounce enough. So if that's what's happening, that's a good indication of why that that's happening. All right. And there's a bounce roll. And then last but not least, there's a buzz roll, but um, mainly the ones that you're gonna be needing to use are the stroke, fingering, and bounce. Those are your three number one things that you're gonna use. Okay, so I hope this was very, very helpful to you. Um, I know when I heard that and why to use the stick a certain way and when to use it, it was so helpful to me. So even with this video, there's times to use fingering, stroke, bounce, and there's times not to. So learning where to put those and why and for how long are things that really only come by experience and by having an instructor help show you when to do those things. So uh, if you have any questions about which strokes to apply and why, definitely let me know and check out the website. Schedule a free session with me and we can go over some specific examples if you like. Um, also, if you have any songs and you want to learn a specific part of that song you're having trouble with, let me know. Love to help you. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one. Take care.